Okay, hi, welcome. Um, in this uh, video lecture, uh, we're going to go over uh, binary tree data structures, uh, well, tree, tree data structures in general, um, but, but we're mostly concentrating on looking at binary trees and binary search trees in this class. Um, so I'm first going to go over some of the properties and definitions of trees, and then later on, um, uh, maybe for 10 minutes at the end, um, I'll bring up and do a little bit of code. So this will be a little bit of, of some things to help you get started on the uh, assignment for this week, which is um, uh, implementing a few methods of a binary search tree, okay? So, uh, first of all, um, so, so, you know, in general, uh, a, a tree structure is, is a structure um, that um, um, is a graph structure. And um, it, it's such so that it's no, no, there's no circular paths in the node, right, when, when you're talking about a binary tree. Um, so in, um, for example, uh, and, and a binary tree, one thing about it that it's, it can be used for searching is um, that uh, we keep the nodes in particular order, right? So uh, we, we keep nodes on the left or the right-hand side um, uh, based on uh, nodes as we're inserting. Okay, so a typical insertion sequence for a binary search tree, so we might start by inserting like a seven, uh, then our next node is a six, okay? So since the six is less than the seven, we end up creating um, a, a new node to the left of the six, um, and, and so that, that gets inserted over on the left-hand side. And then it keeps going like that. Okay, so, so, so five is less than six, um, so when we insert that into our binary tree, that will get inserted to the left of the six, right? Um, so here's our first example of something that was bigger. So 11 is bigger than, than the, the search node, than, than seven, so it gets inserted on the right. So whenever we're, we're inserting a new number in a binary tree, you start at, at the root node here, like seven. So here, when we had the four, we compare seven to the four, um, and, and then we proceed down. So if it's less than, you want to proceed down the left-hand side of the tree when you're inserting new nodes in there. Um, and when it's greater than, of course, you go to the right-hand side. So you follow the right-hand branch, right? So here for, for the four, um, it's less than the seven, so we go down here, and, and, and we're going to be doing this recursively. So when we implement uh, the, the trees um, in code, in C++ code, like we'll do, uh, these lend themselves very well to recursive functions, okay? So, so once we decide we, we need to follow the left-hand node to insert the four, um, then we go down and we do the same comparison over and over here. So for the six, uh, we check the four. Again, it's less than, so we would go to the left, um, and it's less than five, so we go to the left. And then uh, at this point, before we had inserted the four, uh, the, the five was actually a leaf node. So when we checked and tried to go to the left of five, um, its left node was null. So that tells us that we need to insert a new node, so, so uh, basically create a new node, um, and then link the left um, uh, link of five to four, okay? So that's the general kind of insertion procedure for nodes in a tree. So when you get one, it's less than all these, so it ends up on the extreme right-hand side, and so on. So, so here the eight was bigger than seven, but it was less than 11, so it goes down here. Uh, and 12, and then two, and then just um, finishing the, the tree off here, right? So, so given the sequence of insertions, you end up with your binary tree that, that looks like this uh, uh, here, right? Um, so a couple of, of things, of, of properties that you'll get with the binary tree. Um, so first of all, the, the, the top node is the root node, okay? So it typically, if we don't do anything kind of special for a, a binary tree, the first node that you insert is going to be the root node, and then that's going to end up kind of um, governing the structure of your tree because, yeah, I mean, it, so, so the, the first node that gets inserted uh, ends up at the root of the, the binary tree, uh, and then all nodes that are less than are going to have to be to the left of that, and all nodes that are greater than that root node are going to end up being to the to the right of that, right? So anyway, that, that's, that's known as your root of the tree. Um, for this node at the top, so in a binary tree, every node can have one, zero, one, or two children, basically, right? So the, in this case, the, the root node 7 has two children. Um, the, the left child has the value of 6 in the node, and the right child has the, the value of 11 in the node, right? Um, so we can talk about a subtree. A subtree is any um, structure where you take some node that isn't the, the overall root of the tree, but you, you start from that as your kind of your new root. So here we can talk about the subtree 
um, with 11 um, as, as the root of the subtree, and it just contains these nodes that are in the triangle here. Uh, you can do the same thing. So, for example, one makes a subtree here with just these three nodes uh, to the right of one, one, two, and three, and so on. Um, and so, so binary trees have levels. Um, so, like like we like to do in computer science, we, we normally start numbering things at zero. So, we, we think we talk of the root as being at level zero, um, and then the children of the root are at level one. Uh, and then the children of those children would be at level two, and so on. So in this case, the height of the tree is, is seven, um, um, and there's going to be six numbered levels, basically. Um, so level zero through six, right? And, and, and you can talk about the, which, what, what the height is of each of these nodes in the tree. So, so these uh, nodes here um, are um, at, at height one, and so, so I, I'm... I'm yeah, so the, the, the overall all height of the tree is 7. Um, so we, we would say that, that the root node is at height, has a height of 1, and, and these children have a height of 2, and so on. And so these, this node at level 6 um, has the highest height, uh, height of, of 7. Uh, height is a little bit, you know, so, so you have to think of another kind of pet peeve I have about trees is that they're more like the, the, the roots of a tree, you know, so, so, so if you were thinking of a tree, you'd, you'd think of the branches growing up, um, but, but we, we typically kind of depict them going down like this, and then height um, is kind of really from the top, even though we're going down, and so, so, so you can think of that as depth as well, but, but anyway, that, that's just kind of the standard nomen, nomenclature, um, so your height and, and, and your root of your tree and, and and we normally kind of depict them in this um, in this manner, kind of in a top down usually. So uh, some more nomenclature. So the leaf nodes, any, any node that doesn't have any children um, is a leaf node. So in this tree that we built, there was actually only three leaf nodes: the, the three, the nine, and thirteen. Everything else um, is an internal node. Okay, so all of these nodes are internal. So anything that has um, one or two children in a binary tree. Um, is, is an internal node, it's a non-leaf node, right? Um, so we talk about the path, okay? So, so uh, if, if, you know, and these all make good questions on quizzes and tests, you know, so when we get to these more complex <coughs> um, uh, data structures in this class, and uh, you, you can talk about things like this. So, so, so if I ask for, like, the path to the node, basically that's the list of what you have to traverse or visit to get to a particular node. So the path to three, starting at the root, we have to go from seven to six to five to four to one to two to three um, to, to traverse the tree and get down to uh, that node. Um, so here, the, the, the depth um, of, of the node is, is equal to six. Um, so, you know, depth is, is basically the same as, as height, but, but by definition, we, we usually think of this as how many, depths we think of as how many you have to follow to get to the node. So, so we have to follow one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, links from the root to, to get to our, our um, node three here. Um, so, and, and uh, so, you know, just another example. So we can talk about the path to nine. So the path to nine would go from seven to 11 to eight to 10 to nine and would have a depth of one, two, three, four um, in this case. Um, so, so again, uh, when we talk about the depth, that's equal to the path length. That's just kind of the definition of it. Um, so just two kinds of things that these are useful to understand um, when you read the supplementary readings in, in our uh, extra uh, data structures textbook that I've been using for the, the trees and the stacks and the cues in this class. Uh, so for one, a full tree um, is one where um, all um, internal nodes have two non-empty children, okay? So, uh, I mean, it, 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 it's... It, it's, it can be tough to memorize the, the difference between a full tree and a complete tree. So, so a full tree is just one where every node, um, every internal node, so, so you can disregard the, the, the leaf nodes here, but, but every internal node has basically both of its children are not empty, right? So, so the, the tree we originally built was not a full tree, but here's an example of a full tree. So we would have had to add all these X's. So, so everything... Um, 
that, that I had previously shown before that was an internal node, to make it a full tree, we have to make certain that it has both of its children um, uh, here. So here, I mean, the, so we don't need, and, and, and kind of a corollary of that is everything that's um, a leaf node then, um, well, um, that, that's the definition. So, so all leaf nodes then are going to be ones that have no children, right? So, so everything either has two children or, or no children um, in, in a full tree like this, right? So that, that's just what a full tree looks like. It's going to have all, all these kinds of nodes. But notice that, that this, so this is not the same as a complete tree. Um, so, so even though every, every internal node has both children, um, the, basically a complete tree, the height is going to be equal here. So, so we've, we've got some nodes at very different heights. So, so, so we've got nodes here only at, at height um, three, but some here all the way down to height uh, seven or a depth of six. So. So a complete tree uh, is, is obtained by filling in the nodes level by level, right? So basically, if, if you're inserting a node and you want to keep the, the tree complete, you have to make certain that you don't insert so, so that you get things at different depths, okay? So at most, the depth can be different of one for a complete tree. Um, so this is a complete tree, right? So, so everything is either at th this depth of three or the depth of two, um, so we have nothing that, that's more than one depth apart in a uh, complete tree, okay? Um, so to tell you the truth, we, we don't use these concepts a lot. You should read um, our supplementary textbook. So, so it uses these a little bit for a few things it talks about. But th these become very important when we try to start doing things like balanced binary trees. So, so it's some of the more advanced topics for, for, for tree structures, um, so balanced trees and, and black, red black trees and things like that, which are a little bit beyond the scope of this class. But if you're interested, uh, the trees are very um, useful data structures. So they're used in a lot of um, more specialized situations than stacks and queues and just a binary tree. But but there's lots of variations. Um, so, so they're very useful for making very... Um, um, uh, very... Uh, um, 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 structures that, that, that lower the complexity of, of, of the, the time usage of, of different things. So, um, all right. Um, I think maybe I'll skip over these here, but um, so um, if you read our supplementary textbook, there, there's a little bit of some theorems about um, uh, the number of leaves um, in like a, a full tree um, versus a complete tree, right? So, so just to kind of to jump to the, the the conclusion here, the number of leaves in a non-empty full binary tree is one more than the number of internal nodes, right? Um, so, so here, so initially when we only have one node, our root node, uh, that's an internal node. Um, I mean, there's no internal nodes. That's a leaf node. So internal nodes are those that have um, one or two children. Um, so, so yeah, they're, they're just one leaf, leaf node. So you can kind of prove this this to yourself just if you add nodes in here, right? So, um, so again, a full binary tree has to have uh, every every node that's internal has to have both of the children. So, in order for this still to be a, a full binary tree, we have to add the two leaf nodes. So now we've got one internal node um, and we end up with two um, leaf nodes, right? So again, to keep this a complete tree, we would have to add in either the, the two nodes for B or the two nodes for C. Um, so like that. So, so now we've got uh, actually two internal um, and then the number of um, leaf nodes is, is the number of internal plus one, right? Um, so if you read the, 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 the textbook, um, uh, it's not too tough to, to prove that to yourself, so, so you, can, you can see it, why that's true for a, a full tree, that, that if you count up the internal nodes, one, two, three in this case, that, that implies we have to have four, one, two, three, four leaf nodes uh, in this tree here. So, um, so um, another kind of quick theorem, the number of empty subtrees in a non-empty binary tree is one more than the number of nodes in the tree. So... Um, so here we're not talking about a special tree, so, so it's not full or complete. So, so uh, basically, if you know, 
uh, what the number of nodes are in the tree, um, we're going to know how, basically how many null pointers are in the, in the tree in total. So, so yeah, it, it's one more uh, than the number of nodes. So if we have one node, um, then that implies there's two empty subtrees or, or, uh, or basically two null pointers here. So both the left and the right are null for A here. Um, uh, so with two nodes, there's going to be three. So, so here, and what, what the serum means by empty subtrees is basically that, that you know, the, the, the null, that the, the link um, is null. There's, there's no um, ch child nodes under um, that particular place. So here we've got the, the two left and right for B are empty, plus the right on A are empty. So this kind of works out in a similar way for why this is true to the previous theorem that we just talked about. So when we have three, we've got four empty subtrees or four nulls in the tree. So, um, all right. So one thing I did want to, to, to briefly then mention as well here um, is this idea of um, tree tra traversal. So... Um, um, it's not too hard to implement this, and, and, and again, these would almost always be implemented using a recursive function, or that's the easiest way to, to do these. Um, so the recursive function, if you want to do an in-order traversal, is you simply do call the function. So the base case is when you get to a, a null node, you're done. So you just stop as soon as you, as soon as you get to a place that's null. But otherwise, so if I give you to the 8 to start at, um, um, to do a, a tree tra an in-order tree traversal, so that, that's the node you start with. Um, you would first call, call in order recursively on the left, so, so, so here. And then, then again, so now we would be in this function, so it would call it recursively on the left, and now it would be in this function, so it, it would call it recursively down to here. And at this point, um, it's, it's the left is null, so, so it would just return immediately. And then we would finally be at this point where we would output um, the item, right? So if you followed that uh, for in order traversal, you would you would recursively call here, here, here. Then you'd return and you would output one. Uh, and then you would try to do the right sub node, but that's null, so you'd return. And then you would finally return from this one. Uh, and now you would you would print out two. Um, and then um, you would traverse down the right hand side. So for a binary tree, uh, one of the things about a binary tree is that an in-order traversal is always going to um, output the items in sorted order because a binary tree is used for search. And um, um, so this allows you that this, uh, so, so um, one thing I should have mentioned here is, is that this ends up, a binary tree data structure gives you something uh, that allows you to do the same thing as a binary search that we talked about in this class, right? So to, to search for an item and find out whether an item is in a binary tree or not, you just need uh, a log in, log base two of in um, comparisons to determine whether it's in there or not. And that works because basically if you organize a binary tree like this, uh, if I want to search for something like nine, um, I know that it has to be, I can eliminate basically half of the items if, if the tree is mostly balanced, right? So if I'm searching for nine, I know I don't have to search to the left subtree. It has to be somewhere on the right subtree if it exists. So then I go down here, and then, then it has to be on the left subtree of 12 and, and left subtree of 10. And then I either find the item or not when I get to, the, to, the, uh, to a leaf node, basically, right? So... Um, so, so binary trees are related to binary search, right? Uh, they, they allow you to um, determine whether an item is in the collection or not in logarithmic time, right? But like, like if, if you were doing a binary search with a list, like a linked list, um, you would have to, if you wanted to insert a new item into the linked list, uh, you would have to basically... Um, do a linear search um, to to find the location to search it. Um, so here, uh, even though we can search it in logarithmic time, we can also insert in logarithmic time because if we want to insert a new node, you basically do the same thing. You search to the location till you find the correct empty subtree, and then you create a new, new node and attach it um, at that location in the tree. So. 
Um, so that was a bit of a side. I might I, I might have had that. On, I might have been jumping ahead here a bit. Um, but so back to in order traversal. Um, so so when you do an in order traversal, because of the the basic organization of, of a binary tree, if you want to use it for search, um, this this thing that everything to the left has to be less than the item and everything to the right has to be greater. So if you do an in order traversal, you'll get the 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 list. You'll visit the nodes in sorted order, basically, or, or you'll output them in sorted order. Um, so the others are you can do a pre-order or post-order search. So these could be useful for other different um, use cases. Um, so here, for, for a pre-order, you first output the, the the item that you're visiting, and then you visit the left and then the right um, item. So that would mean, for example, if you start from the root again, you would first output eight, and then you would visit left the left tree. Uh, and now, now we're kind of recursively down here, so now you would output four, and you would visit the left tree, and you would output two, visit the left tree, and you would output one. And then there's nothing left to visit here. So when you return, you would visit the, the right tree, that's where the three gets printed out. Um, then you return, you, are, you already visited two, so you return, you already visited four, so now you would start visiting the right here. And then you would get the six, followed by the five, followed by the seven. And then we'd be back here, so you'd get the 12, and then followed by the 10, followed by the 9, followed by the 11, followed by the 13. Um, so recursively, you would write that like that. But basically, when you do pre-order, you, you first output the node you're currently visiting before visiting the left and the right um, subtrees. And then a post-order is basically you first visit the left the right, before you print out your item. So for, for post order, the, the first node that you start with would be the last one that ends up being printed out, right? So in this case, um, you would first visit the left, 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 that, that, so you'd end up going all the way down to the left side, you, and then you would, um, um, uh, there's nothing left to visit here, so you visit the left and the right, they're both null, then you would finally print out the one. Um, and then again, before printing out the two, you would go to the right, you print out the three, uh, and then so on, right? Um, so, and for all of these, in order, pre-order, and post-order, you can also uh, have a variation where you instead visit the right before you visit the left. Um, doesn't make a lot, it's not very useful for like an in-order search, so that would actually end up getting you um, the items. Uh, well, it, it is. So, so, for example, if you do an in-order search, but you visit right, first by left, you would get uh, the, 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 the nodes output, but in reverse order. So that would give you a, um, the, the, order, the, the item sorted in um, descending instead of ascending order. So just as an example, uh, if you reverse when you uh, visit the left and the right here. So. Um, all right, so anyway, um, you know, most of these come from the supplementary uh, information, so you should definitely read carefully the, 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 the chapter on trees for the supplementary, um, uh, from the supplementary textbook um, this time. Um, so as I said, kind of at the end here, for, for maybe for 10 minutes here, um, I, I wanted to maybe get you started. So, so I mean, that, that's really just kind of some of the properties of trees and some of the things, like what they're used for, like for search and... and, and um, that, that they allow you to search for whether items are in logarithmic time or not. Uh, but I did want to kind of look at, at actually implementing a little bit some of the code here um, um, in a binary tree. Um, so this is basically because what I asked you to do on your assignment 12 was to implement uh, a few functions for a, a binary search tree. So, so I'm actually going to be giving you, I am going to kind of in, to implement the insert here. So this was kind of the first thing you had to do for assignment 12. Uh, but I did want to look at that uh, and show a couple of things here. Um, so so let's kind of start for, uh, although one difference, so for your assignment, I didn't ask you to do a templatized version. It was just a binary tree of integer items. Um, so, but I'm going to show you, so normally if you're building a data structure like this, you would templatize it so that you can have a binary tree of whatever type, strings or floats or whatever you needed. So, uh, so here, uh, so, so a little bit different from the assignment 12 you're working on, um, we, we have a template, uh, so we start, we start off with a structure that just holds 
each of those nodes that we're going to be dynamically creating whenever we need to insert an item. Um, and uh, another thing that I didn't show and that you don't have to do for the assignment, but you know, another thing you might want to do for a binary tree is remove items as well. So you want to be able to uh, create these nodes dynamically and also delete them when you want to remove items from your binary tree. Um, so a, a structure basically is something that's private to our actual binary tree container. Uh, but, but you know, it basically just has uh, pointers so we can create a left and a right subtree um, and, and an item here. And since we're templatized, the item is just of some generic type T that we can uh, um, fill in with a concrete type here. So like I said, um, I wanted to show kind of implementing basically the insert and, 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 and talk a little bit about, and also the recursive um, um, printing out or displaying of the tree here. I did give that to you uh, in, in the code for week 12 here. So, um, so if I was implementing like an insert from scratch, I mean, this is how I would start. Um, so we want to add an insert function. Uh, actually, I'm going to um, I should get rid of these here. I'm going to make this a tree of strings instead of a tree of um, of um, ints, like you're like you're doing for your assignment 12 here. Um, oh, the, I mean, this I'll post this code with the video uh, once I have it. Actually, I'll post the code. Um, uh, maybe I won't post this code, um, although you'll be able to watch what I do here for the insert. But I'll, I'll leave posting the full code uh, till after the the assignment is due here. Um, but yeah, let's make certain this is building here and running. So right now, there's really nothing in here, so it should build. Um, it should output something because I do have the overloaded operator for the output stream, but it's just going to uh, print out like an empty um, uh, list here if we run it. So. Okay, but it is building and running. So, so let's try the insert. So if, if I was starting this, um, I would want to be able to insert something into my tree say like um, uh, Mike. So, so this is a tree of strings, a binary tree of strings here. Um, so like I described in the, the uh, assignment, um, so since it's, it's most natural to implement these functions as recursive, but you need to have sort of like um, a starting point for all these functions. And yet you need to have a way, something that's public so that I can call my binary tree to tell it to insert an item, right? So normally what you do to start off with these I mean, you have something like like insert here, um, it doesn't um, return anything um, and it takes one of these items, whatever we're holding in our binary tree as input, right? Um, and then, I should put this in my private section here. Um, so these are the private recursive functions. That, that will do the real work, okay? So kind of like I described when we were doing the in-order traversal, so normally what you do um, um, for the recursive function is um, you need to um, um, pass in the node uh, because when you recursively call it, you're going to be passing in like the, the left or the, the right subchild, right? So the first thing you, you normally are passing around for the recursive versions are is a pointer to one of these uh, binary tree node um, items. And in this case, for insert, we also need to, in, to pass in the item we want to insert here, like that. Um, and in this, I, I'll show why. So for insert, um, uh, we actually need to return uh, a pointer as well uh, to one of these, to one of those structures as the result here. Um, okay, so... 
uh, in the interest of time, I've, I've, already, I've already gotten these written here, um, and I don't want to waste some time making a mistake and having to debug some things. So I'm going to just kind of copy these uh, two functions in here real quickly um, and, and talk about them here. Okay, so these are the actual implementations of those. So, so down here is the public version of it. So all of, this, all of the public versions for a tree um, container like this are normally going to do is, is actually call the recursive private version, right? So all we do is we call the recursive private version. And again, the, the recursive private version is returning um, um, uh, uh, one of these node pointers. So, so notice initially... Uh, so I should point out, initially when the, the binary tree is created, so, so um, the only thing besides the node count that we have in our binary tree class um, is a pointer to our root item, but initially the, the, the binary tree is going to be empty. Okay? So we're going to initially start off with root be null to indicate that uh, the, the binary tree is empty. Right? So the very first time that we call insert... What we want to happen is we want the, 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 the actual recursive function to, to dynamically create a new node and return that, okay? So insert, the, the node that it returns, you have to assign um, uh, to something. You have to remember that in case that, that when you called that, it created the new node dynamically that needed to be inserted into the tree. So this is typical. When you call the recursive version, you assign the, the, the node that it came back with uh, to something. So here at our top level, we, we assign that to root. Um, because when the tree is empty, it's going to create a new node dynamically and return that. So we want to assign root to be that new node that was created dynamically. If the, the tree is, is not empty, if there's already in there, calling um, the, the recursive insert will just return the, the root node again. So it doesn't do any harm to assign it if it's already been created. We just end up reassigning um, that root node again. So anyway, the, like I said, the real work happens on these recursive functions. Um, so Uh, I must not copy everything correctly here. I messed, I messed up something here. Uh, I didn't copy the whole function. So, anyway, so here's the function finally. Um, so uh, again, you know, so you guys aren't doing a template functions uh, template class in your uh, 12 assignment, but but uh, here, so we're templatizing the type T, but otherwise it should look pretty similar to the functions that you guys are doing. So, so we have a node and an item coming in for the recursive version, and we're returning a pointer as a result. So the the base case for all these uh, uh, recursive functions, um, and, and and again, this this is going to be the, a general pattern. So whether you're talking about insert or search or delete or whatever, if you want to implement those, almost all of, of them, the, the recursive private one, will look similar to this kind of pattern here. So the base case is if, if that node is, is null, and so remember, like, like initially when the tree is, is null, we're passing in root, but root is null. So, so this, this would initially cause the root node to be created, right? So when it's null, you ba we basically need to dynamically create our node. Um, you have to initialize it. So the item for the, the, that node structure, that, that node we just created needs to be initialized to the item we're trying to insert into the tree. Uh, and then the left and right child subtree should, should be set to null just to ensure that we uh, know that they are empty subtrees right now. And then you want to return this new node that we created, right? And, and again, by doing that for the very first time, that ends up assigning the, the, the root of the tree to that new node instead of being empty or, or null, right? Um, but then the, the, the general case, the recursive case, is, is that we need to search the, the tree and find the, the location to insert the, the node into, right? So, uh, so he, here, uh, we're, we're assuming that the, our template type T uh, correctly overloads the... Um, 
the comparison operator. So we can use like less than or greater than or less than or equal equal to like we do here. <clears throat> so anyway, if the node is less than or equal to, we want to insert it to the left of the subtree, and if it's and otherwise, it must be greater. So it has to go be inserted on the right um, child subtree from the current node that we're looking at. So, and again, you know, it might be the case that by calling this recursively, a new node is being created and returned to us. So if our left subtree was, you know, empty, a new node is going to be created and, and returned, and we need to assign that to the left subtree to correctly uh, insert it into the binary tree as we're drawing it here. So, um, so yeah, and, and that's, about, that's, that's about it. So um, um, I won't kind of step through the, it, it would be good, uh, uh, you know, for you to kind of step through this by hand, like, like you know, after we've inserted, like, Mike, if I insert um, another name, say Susan, so, so when I first call this function recursively, Susan is going to be greater than Mike, so, so the, the, the tree won't be empty, um, and Susan would be greater than right, so we would call it recursively on the right subtree. But when we call it that, um, the right subtree is going to be empty, so at that point we'll create a new node with um, Susan, and then we, we return that node, um, so, and so on. So, um, so I'm not certain why. Let's, let's make sure that compiles here. Semicolon. Okay, um, and yeah, if we run it, though, it's still going to be getting null output because we're not. Um, I haven't uh, done the thing to, to get the output correctly here. So um, well, let's just check that it still runs as well. Um, yeah. So, but uh, presumably we did successfully insert a new item. So let's let's add in the output here. So here I can I can also talk a little bit about doing an in order traversal. But uh, you already had this code given to you for assignment twelve, like a two string method. Um, So let me just put this in here. Uh, oh, and I need to add in the, the, the declarations for the two string that I just added. I'll come back to those just a second real quickly. Um, but um, So again, uh, we've got a private um, version that does the act, actual work, doing recursion, and our public version of two string to call here. And, oh yeah, I already had that defined. Okay, so um, so the overloaded um, output operator. Um, is just calling two string um, as as I've done a lot as I've had you guys do a lot in this class, uh, and then two string is supposed to be returning a string, um, and um, so so here we we can, um, uh, but, but this is the, the the public version. So basically, uh, oh no, it's the private version here. Um, I, I need to replace the the public version here. Oh no, so we got it. Um, so. In, in the, the public version, uh, we call the private version, and we start at the root of the tree, um, and then we just output. So, so we're going to output something that looks like a list uh, in this case. And, um, so here, though, is an example of an inner, in order traversal. So again, if we traverse the binary tree in order, we should see the, the items output uh, sorted, basically. right? Um, 
So um, our base case is that if we reach a null node, we do nothing. So, so here, for the recursive version, we're, we're returning a, a string that we're building. So we just return an empty string um, when um, we, we get to a null node, a, a, a null, an empty subtree. Um, otherwise, uh, we do an in-order traversal. So we call, we first call ourselves on our left subtree, two, two strings recursively on the left subtree. And again, remember, that's going to return a string. So when that returns a string, we just output that to our um, output stream here. Or actually, it's a string stream uh, here. Um, so I must have missed something. Um, I should have had a string stream defined here. Oh, no, there it is. That's right. Uh, yeah, so here's our string stream. Um, and then, then we just output our item, doing our inner traversal, and then, and then we call ourselves recursively uh, on the right uh, subtree to output it. So, um, so if that worked correctly, um, uh, yeah, two version of the that, that was the old version here. Let me get rid of that. So if that builds and runs, we should be able to then output our trees now. Let's see if we're getting what we're expecting. So I mean, so far we're getting what we're expecting. So. Um, after we inserted a single item mic, um, and then we uh, called the, the two string method by using the overloaded output stream operator, um, we get our list mic here. Um, so let's, you know, just, just to make certain that it works, let's try inserting, you know, a few more things like um, something to the right. And then something to the left, maybe. Um, and then maybe another thing to the left. Um, um, and then maybe something between M and S, like, for example, um, Perry or something. Okay. Um, so yeah, we, uh, so um, uh, if I could draw it up here, so we should end up with Mike at the root, with a Susan and Gabriel um, as our left and right subtree, and then so on. But but um, you know, so since we're since we're just outputting using an in order traversal, we should always see the, the list sorted when we output it if it's um, if the the code is all working right. So let's try and run that. So, so yeah, for for, for this case, um, um, yeah, all we get, uh, I mean, we are getting see, seeing the items uh, seem to be in there, um, and they're always being output in sorted order. So our, our in order traversal seems to be working um, the way we expect here. So, um, yeah. So I left it as kind of a, an extra credit on assignment twelve to uh, kind of output this as a tree. Um, so, so, so you can use uh, instead of a, a in order. If you use a, a pre order traversal, um, or was it post order? If you use a different traversal, yeah, you can actually get something that looks more like a tree representation to see, you know, which one is actually. So, from this, you can't really tell what the structure of your tree is anymore. Um, you have to know kind of how you inserted things that Mike is actually at the root and and, and kind of what your tree looks like. So. Um, okay, so yeah, that was, uh, d like I said, I, I just, I mostly wanted to do that just to make certain that everybody kind of saw an example and so that I could discuss um, why we've got this, the two versions of the functions, you know, so we're using a lot of the concepts that, that we learned about in this class here, so, so we've got an overloaded function, uh, insert, you know, a, a public and a private version of it, uh, but it's overloaded as a member function. Um, but that, that's a general pattern or a good way to implement these kinds of tree structures if, if you're using recursive functions to do the real work. So you, so you have your public version and, and it just starts by calling the private version with the root node so you can do the actual work. Uh, but, but pretty much like everything you'd want to do with this tree, you know, like, like outputting 
um, the thing or doing a search or deleting a node or, um, or, or whatever you can think of would follow that same kind of general idea. So, um, all right, so that's um, it here. Um, so just kind of as a reminder, um, um, yeah, so, so um, that, that's um, kind of the basics that I hope that everybody knows about the binary search trees and things. Um, and uh, hopefully that's enough to get you started with your assignment 12. Um, and with that, I'll go ahead and end the video here today.